As we've been learning, chemicals can interact in many ways and can connect to each other through the formation of various bonds. But some interactions occur between chemical substances where no bonds are formed. These interactions are called mixtures. A mixture forms when two or more chemical substances are combined together, but are not chemically bonded to each other. They stay separate. Mixtures can be made up of any combination of liquids, solids, or gases. Three types of mixtures that we frequently encounter in the body are solutions, colloids, and suspensions. We've already learned that a solution consists of chemical substances, the solutes, that are dissolved and evenly distributed in another chemical substance, the solvent. In most liquid solutions, water is the major solvent, and these solutions are called aqueous solutions. Solutes can be any form of matter, including gases like oxygen or nitrogen gas, solids such as sodium chloride, or liquids such as alcohol. Most solutions have a clear, transparent appearance due to the very small size of their dissolved solutes. Some common solutions that you're familiar with from your kitchen include vinegar, soda pop, coffee, and lemonade. In the clinical setting, intravenous, or IV, saline solutions are common, which consist of sodium chloride, potassium chloride, and other salts dissolved in water. The word saline means salt. Electrolytes are solutes that dissolve and ionize in solution, forming positive cations and negative anions. As a result of these charge differences, they are able to conduct an electric current. Some examples of strong electrolytes that ionize completely in solution include salts such as sodium chloride and potassium chloride, strong acids like HCl, hydrochloric acid, and strong bases such as NaOH, which is sodium hydroxide. If a solute dissolves in a solution, but does not ionize or cannot conduct an electric current, it is called a non-electrolyte. Non-electrolytes include a variety of organic compounds, such as sugars, like glucose and sucrose, alcohols, like methanol and ethanol, and proteins. The second type of mixture found in the body is called a colloid, Colloids are mixtures of large solute particles distributed within some type of solid, liquid, or gas dispersing agent. All colloids share the following properties. They have a large particle size. Their solute particles do not settle out over time with gravity and cannot be separated by filters. And they have a turbid or cloudy appearance as they scatter light. Examples of some common colloids include milk, which consists of large proteins, and fats dispersed in water, whipped cream, which consists of nitrous oxide gas, N2O, dispersed in liquid cream, and marshmallows, which consist of air dispersed in a solid gel-like mixture of sugar. Some examples of colloids found in the body include the cytosol of a cell and blood plasma. The cytosol is the liquid component of a cell that makes up most of its volume. We referred to it in an earlier video as the intracellular fluid. It's a colloid because it contains many large proteins. Blood plasma is the watery portion of blood having a pale yellow color. It's considered a colloid because of the many plasma proteins, such as albumin and globulin, dispersed through it. 
technically because cytosol and blood plasma also contain many dissolved ions. They can be categorized as both a solution and a colloid. The third type of mixture is called a suspension. A suspension is a mixture consisting of very large solutes distributed within a dispersing agent, where the solutes will eventually settle out over time and accumulate at the bottom of the container. Suspensions share the following properties. They have a very large particle size. Their solute particles will eventually settle out with gravity and can be separated by filters. And they have a very turbid, cloudy appearance. Some everyday examples of suspensions include mud, which consists of soil particles suspended in water, dust particles or pollen suspended in the atmosphere, and flour suspended in water. Examples of suspensions found in the body include a cell cytoplasm and whole blood. The cytoplasm is contained within cells and is composed of the watery cytosol that suspends the nucleus and large organelles such as the endoplasmic reticulum and mitochondria. Whole blood is a suspension because it contains large formed elements, which are the blood cells, such as the red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets that are dispersed throughout the plasma and will settle out over time after withdrawal, as we see here in this test tube. The heaviest, densest cells, the red blood cells, settle out on the bottom, while the less dense, white blood cells and platelets settle out just below the plasma. 